Liberal Democrats candidate for the federal seat of Barawa. Welcome to the Barawa Express. It's our weekly campaign update that we live stream. In the electorate of Barawa, there's 50,000 people under the age of 30, and today I wanted to focus on them. Uh, how the way our governments have responded to the pandemic has impacted upon these young demographics and what we need to change for these younger people. Uh, my guest is Liberal Democrats candidate for Chifley, Ben Ruffley. Ben is right now attending a protest rally in Canberra. G'day Ben, what's happening there? G'day. G'day. I'm Nick Samios, uh, Liberal Yeah, g'day Nick, mate. How are you going? Going super, mate. I'm just, uh, as you know, we're not we're we're, we're uh, <laughs> candidates for parliament. We're not uh, we're not techno experts. So a bit of a That's glitch. Right. There. Listen, what's happening where you're at, mate? What's going on? I'll give you a bit of a uh, a view, mate, of where I am right now. Look at oh, that! Wow, that looks like about 300 people. Oh, mate, <laughs> a couple of hundred, yeah, <laughs> a couple of hundred, couple of hundred people where I'm at now. Yes, that's what the media would say. But no, it's um we've just been marching from um from Glebe Park. We're about to go over across the bridge now, over to uh to Old Parliament House, and there are as you can tell from the uh, from the video, there are thousands of people here. Yeah, mate, that is it's fantastic. amazing, absolutely fantastic. And it, you've obviously spoken to a lot of people. You've been there for a little while. What are the, yes. what are the sorts of people there? Mate, it's 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 the same crew that turns up every time. You know, the media like to spin it different ways, but it's uh. It's people here that are just fighting for freedom, you know. I would say that half, maybe more, of the people here are vaccinated. It's not even about the vaccine anymore, Nick. It, it's it's about kids. They're, they're the chance that you hear a lot, uh, standing up for kids, which I guess we can touch on today. That that leads into what we're talking about. Um, but yeah, the the vibe here, mate, is um it's unbelievable. People singing, dancing, everyone's just happy. But obviously here for a, not a happy thing. But yeah, it's just great to be out amongst the the people. Yeah, I mean, look, I think that uh, what 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 gets you. I mean, I've been to a number of these protests. I mean, we were both in Strathfield the other day, and it's just regular folks. Yes. I mean, there's you know, there's one or two sort of people with a few fringe ideas. There's no doubt about that. That's but, right. I mean, that's that's that's, right. that's a cross section of society, right? I mean, anywhere you exactly. go, there's, there's people with some ideas that we don't necessarily feel with. But for the most part, they're just regular folks. And as you said, uh, a, a lot of them are vaccinated. They've just uh, they've just had a gut full. Um, that's right. Listen, I, wanted, that's ex- I, I wanted to show you a couple of slides. Um, yeah, sure. I don't know if you'll be able to see them on the phone, so I will. Yep. Uh, I'll, I'll read them out to you. Whoops. Where have I gone there? Hang on. Uh, okay. So on Twitter today, he, uh, no, yesterday I think it was. Uh, I, yep. I wanted to highlight the fact that the hysteria that is still going on in the media over COVID, and here's Alan Kohler and Michael Pasco. Uh, if I might say, a couple of journo's at least of my vintage. I'm 57. I don't know how these guys would be a little bit older than me. I, I, I believe that there's a, a mathematical formula for the level of hysterity, and it's maybe age multiplied by maybe BMI, perhaps. Um, <laughs> yes. And, that, and that, that sort of turns up the, the volume. Here's a tweet that um, Kohler had written an article in the, um, in the New, da- uh, New Daily. Basically, because there's 80 people a day dying of COVID, which is a number that's totally out of context, imagine if there were two buses crashing every day, all souls lost, or an aircraft coming down with 80 people on board every day. It is a pandemonium. Um, you know, this is this is the sort of hysteria we've, we've got to put up with. Um, yeah. Now, now, um, now, then I got into a bit of a fight on Twitter, uh, and um, as you do, had, as you do, as you do. <laughs> and I had this uh, this guy. I, I basically said, "Look, I'm concerned about our kids. You know, um, yeah, uh, I've got you know, I've got a teenager still at school. I've got a couple of young young adults. I know what I was up to uh, when I was their age. And and uh, you know, they've been restricted. They've got to wear face masks to school and all this sort of stuff. And um, I copped a bit of flack from someone saying, "Oh, gee, my kids are quite happy to uh, to get you know, embrace the vaccines and." Yada yada yada. Um, what I thought was interesting, I replied with this thing. Um, Bill Maher, who's an, a left-wing TV host in America, he had on Barry Weist, who, uh, who is a journo with the Wall Street J- Journal and New York Times, uh, a progressive, and she made the comment that, um, uh, that, that, that the response to the pandemic is going to be remembered by the younger generation as a catastrophic moral crime, and she said it's a pandemic of bureaucracy. 
Um, so, uh, you know, I'm going to I'm sort of making you the uh, the uh, uh, Liberal Democrat spokesman for uh, for, for youth today. Um, yeah. uh, what, what's your response to that? <laughs> yeah, it's funny that it took them two years to, uh, to to say what we've been saying for the for the the, the last two years. Um, yeah, look, I obviously being a young fellow myself um, and, and knowing a lot of people my age, I, I think that this pandemic really is going to affect the younger generations for, for many years to come. Um, you think about the youth, so think about people that are, I guess, even a little bit younger than myself, um, weren't able to go to school, weren't able to see their friends, the lockdown in their homes. Uh, in my local government area of concern, I, I was one of the, the 12 LGAs that was locked down out in Blacktown. You know, they closed parks down, mate. Uh, they had signs up on parks and, uh, and barric barricades up on parks saying that, that kids couldn't even come and play at parks. So just imagine the, the effect that things like that will have on kids uh, for, the, for the future generations going forward. It, it's, it's absolutely disgusting what these people have done. And, and I really don't know where it ends unless we do what we're doing today and, and we get out in force and we make them hear us and we make them understand. Well, I, I agree that it's disgusting. It's interesting. I mean, I had no intention of getting involved in politics whatsoever. I've always been interested in politics, obviously. I've always, yep. you know, uh, and I don't know whether or not, you know, when you were at school, you thought that, uh, you know, come 2022, you'd be running for the federal seat of Chifley. I mean, I've been driven <laughs> to get into this because it is disgusting, as you say. And mm. I'm disgusted for the youth. Uh, I'm disgusted for small businesses as well. I guess they're sort of my two areas of concern. I mean, what, were, were you always planning to get into politics or is it just that you just couldn't stand by and watch? That's a, that's a funny one. I was uh, I was school captain at primary school um, and then sort of once I got into high school, you know, I got into the old, you know, getting getting sort of mixed around with the wrong crowd and everything. But to be completely honest with you, I uh, up until about two years ago, I, I would have just been a a dead liberal voter for, for the rest of my life, you know, not taking any notice of anything. And the only reason I would have voted liberal uh, was because that's what my parents, I, I, I think, vote for. I know my dad does. Um, but I would have just done that for my whole life and not even worried if it wasn't for COVID. Uh, but COVID came around. Um, I started seeing what was happening. I, I guess you could say I was awake to what was going on. And uh, I hated it. And, and I thought everything that was going on was, was disgusting. I, I was coming home from work, uh, complaining to my family trying to talk to friends about it and, and not really going anywhere. And then I thought, well, you know what? The only way that I can really do something about this is if I do get involved. Um, and yeah, so I joined the party uh, and now I'm a candidate. So no, I, I really didn't have any aspirations or ambitions to, to be a politician or, or to run as a candidate, but here I am, you know, and I think it's important for, for the younger generation and people like myself to, to stand up and be a voice. Um, so yeah, that, that's why I'm here. I mean, certainly, uh, uh, you, you know, and, and the party's got some wonderful principles. One is personal responsibility. Now, n not everybody, you know, can be young and healthy. You know, there are some people who are vulnerable to this virus. There's no doubt about it. But I've just objected to the fact that, uh, you know, we've got, there are some people that are vulnerable and, and they absolutely must be protected and we should take measures to protect the vulnerable. There's absolutely no question about that. But the people that aren't vulnerable are just people who, you know, just because they can work from their laptop in their pajamas at home, uh, you know, and and want to scold the rest of us. Um, you know, I don't. I shouldn't have to protect them. And my kids shouldn't be prevented from going to school. They shouldn't have to face mask all day in the classroom. Uh, it's. I think that's absolutely disgraceful. Now we'll, we'll get to the economic consequences. Um, mm. Now I just wanted to show you. I think I've got one more slide here. Um, yeah. Did you see this in Perth yesterday? <laughs> did you I see did. this one? Yes. Yes, I yes, mean, that was I, that, that was the police coming through asking for masks. <laughs> it, yeah. Now, there's a couple of things. F firstly, um, you know, when you see this, as you know, uh, there's a lot of fake news, and fake news can mm. sometimes be a real photo out of context. Mm. Is this a mm. real photo out of context? Absolutely not. Uh, mm. The police have responded to this. Uh, they said that they were called. Uh, they were called in because. Um, uh, so they receive a complaint. So my first response to that is, you know, what have we created is this society where people feel, you know, that they think it's a great joke um, to uh, to complain against the church. Just one sec, my, my actually one of my youth doesn't realise that I'm live streaming on Twitter at the moment. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, and the protesters uh, don't realise I'm live yeah. streaming. If you can hang on five minutes, I'll give you a lift, buddy. Um, <laughs> 
so, uh, so um, what, where was I? <laughs> yeah. So, so what's happened here is that somebody has has snitched, right? Yeah. It, uh, it could be someone who's genuinely concerned. Uh, yeah. My guess is that more likely it's someone who. Um, uh, I don't know, they're pranking or, you know, maybe they're politically motivated, uh, mm. who knows, you know. Mm. Um, but, you know, you know what, what, is this really necessary? What the hell's going on? There's no other word for it other than ridiculous. Uh, and I, I keep using that word and I, I keep using that on Twitter all the time. It, it, I, there, there is no explanation for it. We're two, you know, we're two years into this um, and you still got stuff like that going on. You know, police officers coming into a, to a church asking people to, to put masks on. Um, at this stage, you know, everything in the pandemic now should be uh, all about personal choice. Um, I, I was g getting back to what you were sort of saying at the beginning um, of this, where you were sort of saying that uh, we have to take measures to uh, protect people that are vulnerable. I, I, at the beginning of this pandemic, and still to this day, I still, I still agree with that. And I think the beginning of the pandemic, you know, we didn't know what was going on. We didn't know about the virus. It was scary. So we locked down. We put all these measures in place. But then the data started coming out. And we started to realise, well, when I say we, not the majority, but people started to realise uh, that what was going on was just continuing for, for what? We, we, we had the data. We knew that we had to protect vulnerable people. It was people over above the age of 70 that were really getting ill and dying. So we needed to put measures in place to protect them. But, but everyone else, everyone else is, is really not uh, that affected by this virus. You know, there are some people that do get sick, for sure. There are people that have comorbidities that get sick and die, for sure. But everyday general people are really not affected too much by this virus. Um, and we still have measures in place two years later. It's, it's, it's crazy, Nick. And, and yeah, the word I keep coming back to is ridiculous. That's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's all I can keep coming back to. I don't think there's anything else I could say. <laughs> uh, and the, the, other, the, other, well, the other thing is that um, my, my concern for, for youth, it's, it's A, you know, you've been denied going to the pub, socialising, having any sort of a normal youth existence. You know, you've been denied having face-to-face -face, uh, lectures at university and all of that campus experience, denied the sporting activities and all of that stuff that we had. Yeah, you, you, you and me, Alan Kohler and, and Michael Pascoe, we did all of this stuff, mate, and we're That's denying right. these younger people. So, you know, sit on your, sit on your backsides uh, and tap out your little, uh, your little hostilities uh, <laughs> there. Uh, it's pathetic. It's absolutely pathetic. Um, yep. so, so, look, and the other thing is that the, the Reserve Bank, I was explaining this to my brother the other day, and he couldn't mm. believe the way it works, right? So the government <laughs> is pouring money into the economy. Now, the way they do this is they print bonds, and then they, they, they generate money by people buying those bonds. And nobody yep. wants to buy the bonds because the yield on the bonds is nothing. So yep. the Reserve Bank prints, uh, buys the bonds, right? <laughs> so, the reserve, now, so this is, it's a kinder money printing. And you know who's going yep. to be paying the bill? It ain't me, yep. mate. It's going to be, it's going to be you, <laughs> Ben, roughly. That's right. right? Yeah, that's right. You, mate, and your, you and your cohort. And yep, it's, that's right. it's, it's, it's garbage. Yep, that's right. And, that, and that's another reason, mate, that I don't understand why, um, especially people my age, um, aren't doing more to stand up. You know, I've been shocked by the response by, and this is just personally, um, but, but people that I know that are my age, um, they couldn't care less about what's going on. Some of them seem to be happy that, you know, these things are going on. You know, I've had comments made to me um, over, the, over the course of this pandemic from people that I, you know, I would have called friends at some point, you know, saying horrible things to me just because I, I, I think it's ridiculous what's going on and I, and I wanted to put a voice out there. But well, yes, mate, you're let, let me right. ask you, what, what, yep. what's happened to the median price? Uh, this is a bit of a Scott Morrison question here. Do you know what the price of a carton of milk is? Oh, well, roughly, I mean, the, the, the median price of a house in Blacktown, for arguments. Yeah. I don't know what yeah. it is, but I'll yeah. tell you what's happened to it over the last 12 months. It's gone yeah. like that. Oh, for right? sure. Like, yeah, like yeah, that. it has. And, yep, uh, right. and that means that it's less accessible to someone, you know, someone sub-25 who's starting yep. out. And, yep. I mean, that's that's a, that's a crime in, in itself as far as I'm concerned. Um, yes, for sure. So, just get, so what else is going on? Just, just show us that crowd again. So you might not be able to see now, but we're at the back end of the protest. But if I, uh, if I come back here, you might yep. be able to see, uh, where are we? That might be a bit of a better view. There's a uh, parliament house in the background and you can see all the, the group of protesters heading up over the bridge. So I'm at the back end of the, uh, of the crew now. So I'll try and catch up with Dean. I think he's around somewhere too.
there's a few other people wearing some Liberal Demo Democrat shirts around, which is great to see. So it's um, it should well, be a good day. Pass on my regards to them and power to you. And uh, I really mm. hope that uh, come uh, you know May thirtieth or whatever it is, uh, at least at least some of us are uh, are making plans to to move in down there and actually uh, shake the place up. That's what <laughs> I we hope so. Do. Yes, let's get John in here. That's our, That's my exactly. goal. Exactly, mate. Get let's get in let's here. absolutely. That's we right. need we need John Ruddick in there. All right, mate. Thank you very much, Ben. Perfect. Take it easy. Have Thanks, a good day. Nick. Have Cheers. a good day, mate. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Thank <laughs> you.